Welcome to Real Business Connections. I'm your host, Ben Albert. Today is a bonus episode. We're giving you fly on the wall access to something that's exclusive, never been seen by the public before uh, from my community, Grow Getters Only. Bring, we bring on high level mentors, coaching, uh, workshops, and Q&A ultimately with some of the greatest thought leaders in the world. Bob Berg was episode 86 of this podcast, if you want to listen to that. But Bob Berg co-wrote The Go-Giver, world-renowned international best-selling book, The Go-Giver Way. And the community at Grow-Getters Only got to ask him anything we want. Here, you get to see what we do there, just an aspect of what we do. Um, Tuesdays at 12 Eastern Time. Um, and if you enjoy this and if you want to be a part of the next Q&A Go to growgettersonly.com, G-R-O-W-G-E-T-T-E-R-S, growgettersonly, I forgot the only at the end, growgettersonly.com, or send me a message. I'll make sure you get the link. I'll come in. You can come in, be my guest, come in for free, not a big deal at all. But I want to show you what we do there, and I want to give the value that my private community gets every week to you for free. So here it is with Bob Berg. Oh, we have one more thing before I almost clicked stop. I want to let you know if my audio stings and if it looks like I'm in a hotel room, it's because you nailed it. I am in a hotel room in Louisiana. I was actually at the New Orleans Jazz Festival uh, that week. And the beauty about this community is people calling from anywhere in the world. So if my audio uh, stinks or if I look weird, you're correct. And let's just dive right into it. Enjoy the show. You're listening to the Real Business Connections Network. Real Business Connections Network. Powered, powered, powered by Balbert Marketing, LLC. Subscribe now and check us out at realbusinessconnections.com. Enjoy the show. We're here for a fireside Q&A with Bob Berg. And first off, welcome to Grow Getters Only, Bob. Thank you. What a privilege to be here. Thanks for having me. We're going to have some fun. And let, let's get started just by for, I sent your bio. We have fans. I've read the book. Multiple people from the group have read multiple books. Um, but for anyone who's new to the Go-Giver concept, what, what what is the premise? Give us an overview, please. Yeah, it really is simply that shifting your focus, and I think that's really where it all begins, shifting your focus from getting to giving. And when we say giving in this context, we we simply mean constantly and consistently providing immense value to others, understanding that doing so is not only a more uh, fulfilling way of conducting business, it's actually the most financially profitable way as well. And you know, not for any kind of way out there, woo-woo, magical, mystical type of reasons, you know, just give and good things will happen. No, not, not at all. It's actually much more rational, much more logical than that. Um, it's, it's really that when you're that person who can take your focus off of yourself and place it on serving others, on discovering their needs, their wants, their desires, uh, uh, helping them solve their problems and challenges, uh, focusing on moving them closer to happiness. Well, people feel good about you. They really, they feel great about you. They want to get to know you. They like you. They trust you. They want to be in relationship with you. They want to be uh, part of your life. They want to do business with you. Really, they want to be your personal walking ambassador and tell the world about you. So, so that's really, uh, that's really the basic overview of, or, or premise of what being a go-giver and, and what the book is all about. And I recommend everyone read the book, but do you want to briefly go over the five laws to give us an overview of that? Yeah, well, the five laws themselves are the laws of value, compensation, influence, authenticity, and receptivity. The law of value is all about the um, – uh, it, it goes much more than just the intrinsic value of your product or service, as important as, as that is. It's much more about the experience that you add to it from every touch point, from the moment you meet that person through the relationship building process, the follow up, the follow through the sales process, uh, referral process, what have you. It's it's how do you cause them to feel at every single touch point? 
So that's that's really, uh, you know, it, it it comes down to by the time they they buy from you, they feel as though they've received much more in value than what they've paid. While you, of course, have also made a very healthy profit. In fact, in any uh, free market based environment, and when I say free market, I simply mean no one is forced to do business with anyone else. Uh, in any free market type environment, there should always be two profits, the buyer profits and the seller profits, because each of them come away significantly better off afterwards than they were beforehand. So that's really a summation of the law of value. The law of compensation says your income is determined by how many people you serve and how well you serve them. So where law number one, the law of value, is all about your potential income, law number two, uh, compensation equals your actual income because it's how many lives you impact with that value. So we could say that uh, exceptional value, law number one, uh, plus significant reach, law number two, equals very high compensation. Law number three is the law of influence. And this says that your influence is determined by how abundantly you place other people's interests First, now this sounds rather counterintuitive, maybe even counterproductive at best, or even Pollyanna-ish at worst, right? Um, but when you think about it, the greatest leaders you know, the top influencers, the most, uh, the highest money or sustainably money earning salespeople that you know, this is simply how they run their lives and conduct their businesses. They've always got the other person's interests in mind. Now, I do want to qualify this if I may, because I think it can be easy to to, to misunderstand it, and yet it's very important. When we say place the other person's interests first, we certainly don't mean you should be anyone's doormat or a martyr or self-sacrificial in any way. Absolutely not at all. It's simply as Joe, the protege in the story, learned from several of the mentors, the golden rule of, of business, of sales, is that all things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know, like, and trust. And there's no faster, more powerful, or more effective way to elicit those feelings toward you and others than by genuinely moving from that I focus or me focus to that other focus, looking to, as, as Sam, one of the mentors in the story advised Joe, make your win all about the other person's win. Law number four is the law of authenticity. And this says the most valuable gift you have to offer is yourself. In this part of the story, Deborah, one of the mentors, uh, shared a very important lesson she had learned, and that is that all the skills in the world, the sales skills, technical skills, uh, people skills, it, as important as those all are, and they are all very important, they're also all for naught if you don't come at it from your true authentic core. But when you do, when you show up as yourself, day after day, week after week, month after month, uh, people feel good about you. They Really, they feel they feel comfortable with you. You know what I'm saying? They feel comfortable. They feel safe with you. And why wouldn't they? They know who they're getting. And it's, it's such a, an important element, a significant element of human nature that we want to be able to make sense of our, our world uh, in a world that often doesn't seem to make a lot of sense, right? And we want consistency in a world that's often very inconsistent. We all know those people who are one way one day and the next time you see them, they're totally different and it's nerve wracking. You don't know who you're dealing with. So without that kind of consistency based on authenticity, very difficult to both earn trust and keep trust, okay? And that's why it's so important to be Authentic. Now, authentic doesn't mean, and, and you know, I, I, I think the term authentic, authenticity has been almost hijacked by social media because, um, e you know, it's almost like these days authenticity has come to mean no boundaries, you know, just say or do whatever you want and speak whatever's on your mind and say, because that's authentic. And I, you know, I disagree with that. That's, that's sort of like the like the person who says, well, I have anger issues and I yell a lot. And if I were to act any differently, that wouldn't be authentic of me. 
And I, I think that's a lot of baloney. I think that's malarkey, really. It, it simply means that this person has an authentic problem that they need to authentically work on in order to become a better, higher, um, more effective, authentic version of themselves. So when I speak of authenticity, I personally define authentic as simply acting congruently with your values. And I, I think if we do that, then we're really on the right track. And then the fifth and final law is the law of receptivity, which says uh, the key to effective giving is to stay open to receiving. And, you know, this really means nothing more than understanding that, yeah, you breathe out and you breathe in. It's not one or the other. You've got to do both. You breathe out carbon dioxide, you breathe in oxygen. You breathe out, which is giving. You breathe in, which is receiving. Giving and receiving, despite what the world around us tells us with their negative messages, their lack messages, their anti-prosperity messages that we get all the time from all around us, despite that, giving and receiving are not opposite concepts. They're simply two sides of the very same coin and they, they work in tandem. The key is just simply an understanding that it's the giving that comes first. This is natural law. It's the it's laws of nature, whether we're talking about economic nature, um, human nature, physical nature, right? We know that we, we sow before we reap, right? We plant before we harvest. You know, it's like, Pindar said to Joe at the beginning of the story, some people approach a fireplace with the attitude of, first you give me some heat and some fire, then I'll throw on some logs and some newspaper and light a man. Well, it's not how, it's not how life works. And um, so, you know, as long as we understand that, that it, the focus needs to be on the value we provide another person, then we can understand, as John David Mann, my awesome co-author, uh, says, money is simply an echo of value. It's the thunder to values lightning. We focus on the value. The money we receive is simply a natural result of the value we've provided. And that that's a recap. Incredible recap. One quick clarifying question, then we're going to open it up to the group. This not everyone here is a business owner or an entrepreneur specifically. It's not just for business owners. This is for all business professionals, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's people who, who, you know, we think of an entrepreneur, they own their own company. They've, you know, invested financially or with in investors and, or, um, you know, that basically they, they, have their, their end user is the person they have to please. And that's the customer, right? Well, a person who, who doesn't own their own business, but maybe works for another company, they're not an entrepreneur, but they still need to be an intrapreneur. Uh, which is an entrepreneur within another person's company. Why? Because in the same way, and I say this to entrepreneurs, I say this to salespeople all the time, nobody's going to buy from you because you have a quota to meet, or no one's going to buy from you because you need the money, or even because you're a nice person. People are going to buy from you because they believe they'll be better off by doing so than by not doing so, which is the only reason we can we can expect anyone would buy. Well, the same with an entrepreneur, excuse me, no one's going to hire you and pay you a salary because you have a mortgage payment to meet, you know, or because you want to send your kid to a better school or because you this or you that. It's because they believe that the value that you are providing them, that you're giving them as an employee is well worth the amount of, of money and other benefits uh, that they are, are paying. Adrian Bray, you want to kick us off with a question here? Absolutely. Um, and Bob, I, I would also, uh, I'm involved in helping companies get ready for, for sale. And those businesses that add more value than they, than they take are very attractive. If we take the full, the full interpretation of the, the sure. law, and my question for you um, is, what what's the biggest mistake or mistakes that you see people make when they're 
trying to implement the the wisdom that's in the book. Well, one of them is that when they provide value to others, they often do it from their own viewpoint of what value is as opposed to the other persons. And and let me explain if I may. When we talk about the difference between price and value, price is a dollar figure. Value is the relative worth or desirability of a thing, of something to the end user or beholder. In other words, what is it about this thing, this product, service, concept, idea, knowledge, what have you, that brings so much worth or value to another person that they willingly, they'll willingly exchange their, whether it's money, time, energy, you know, what have you for this, okay? Now, as human beings, we all operate from our own set of individual beliefs, our belief system, this belief system, which was basically given to us uh, long before we were old enough to be able to question premises or ask why we just accepted this is you know combination of upbringing uh, and then there's you know environment there's schooling news media tell whatever but by the time we're little more than toddlers our basic set of beliefs are pretty much intact so most of us we grow up and we're run by what i call an unconscious operating system where we think we're making choices from free will when really we're making these choices within a a matrix, if you will, <laughs> if you remember the movie, right? The matrix only without the machines. Instead, it's it's all the ideas and rules and laws and so forth that were handed to us by uh, first our parents and then, you know, others close to us. Well, uh, so this is a, a roundabout way of saying that we tend to, as human beings, believe that what we find to be of value is basically the same that everyone else would find to be of value which makes sense when you think about it, it's all we know. This is why you hear people saying things like, oh, nobody likes that. Or, oh, you know, everyone would want that. Or, well, I would never speak that way to someone else, right? These are all things about us, not everybody. And so um, so what happens is when when we believe we're adding value to another person's life or business, what have you, but really it's just based on what we would find to be a value, we really don't know if this person's appreciating this or if this person's resenting it or if it means nothing at all to them. So uh, I think that's one of the biggest mistakes. It's not discovering what that other person needs, wants, or desires. Thank you for the question. Darlene. Gigi's hey, granddaughter. Hello. How are you? <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, it's so good to see you. And you know what a fan I am and how much value you've brought. I've read Likewise. all your books and mm-hmm. several times. So um, I have a question for you. Have you ever, we all encounter challenging people, right? So how do you navigate when you meet challenging people, or maybe it's just me where I'm like, I don't want to add value. I don't want to do that. Like, how do you get through that? Or do you, or do you kind of put boundaries up? I'd love to hear your take on that. So here is the all encompassing, absolutely definitive answer. It depends. Okay. And because you're not forced to do anything. You don't need to deal with someone that you truly don't want to deal with. It's Remember, there's nothing self-sacrificial about being a go-giver. By the same token, there's times that we find people are not our style and not someone we necessarily like, but we still need to be doing business with them. And, you know, so long as they're not doing something, you know, uh, illegal, unethical, or immoral or something, I'm not talking about that. Obviously, that we wouldn't, but I'm just saying we just don't like them or they have a way of doing things that we don't like, but we still need to do business if we want to earn the kind of money we can earn from doing business with them. Again, so it's all, there's always choices and it's always based on what we believe is ultimately going to bring us closer to happiness based on how we define happiness uh, consciously or unconsciously and based on the choices that we that we have. Okay. But let's say, for example, that this is someone whose business you want or they're within the company you would like the business with, but you know, you're going to have to deal with that person while you have a choice. Is it going to bring you, you know, based on all the pros and cons, the benefits and costs of doing business. Remember, costs are not only financial. 
right? Costs are, uh, are can be financial, but they can also be, um, you know, how much misery is it going to cause? <laughs> it can be, you know, a uh, lost opportunity. If you do business there, you can't necessarily do depending uh, again, depending. So there's all sorts of benefits and costs that you weigh. And if the benefits of doing business with this person or this group is outweighs the negatives, then you do it. So now the the question after that is, well, how do I deal effectively with that person well obviously to the point that you don't have to deal with them that you know that's always that's always great but what if you have to well now this is where you know and, and john and i have a, a book on this called the go-giver influencer and what that was about was people skills and basically you know there's a an old saying from the sages which was who is a mighty person and the answer is that person who can control their own emotions and make of an enemy a friend. And so, you know, how do we do that? And that's where we go through those five steps. One is to master your own emotions, um, which, you know, we have exercises to be able to do so that when this person says or does that thing, you're already so in your mind have already rehearsed that and the feeling and the response that it's not not a surprise and you're able to handle it a lot more effectively. And then we need to be able to step into that other person's shoes, which sounds trite, but what it really means is understand the clash of belief systems. You're probably coming from two different sets of beliefs in terms of ways of handling yourself and working with others. Then there's to the third part is to set the proper frame or reset the frame. The frame is basically the foundation from which everything else evolves. Number four is to communicate with tact and empathy. And number five is to let go of having to be right which means that that you know what you do is you open yourself up to the idea that it's not just you know i'm right they're wrong although sometimes by the way that is is the case and sometimes they're right you're whatever but it's opening yourself up to really exploring and seeking out the truth wherever the truth may lead but when you do that with that other person what happens is um they're much more likely to drop their defenses because they see you as being someone who's not looking to be right by making them wrong, but instead you're simply looking for the, the truth in partnership with them. So in doing this, you're really able to, to, to reshift the relationship, you know, all the time. No, of course not. But a lot of times. Thank you. My pleasure. David Womano. Hey, Ben. Great uh, score getting Bob. Bob, how are you? Um, I'm great, David. How are you? It's great to see you again. Great to see you again. We met, good memory, we met in 2019 with uh, with the great Tony King, who's being shy today, but uh, we met you at the Outbound Conference, and you were on my podcast, so thank you. Yep, uh, by the way, Darlene was talking about me, uh, so... Uh, <laughs> <you> much, and, <laughs> Uh, hopefully I'm kidding. Uh, no, but uh, quick question. I think in a, a lot of small business owners today are trying to establish, you know, as they say, being a thought leader or, you know, being an authority, um, you know, in your field, e even if it's just like in your community, um, you know, somehow, you know, developing enough followers where they feel like you are, you are the authority um, in your expertise and therefore you're going to get a bigger following and customers, et cetera. Um, you know, based on what you were just talking about, about how to use your authenticity um, and your and, you know, your books, what would be some advice that you would give to a small business owner to authentically become the uh, authority figure, the thought leader in their field in, in a way that is really going to make a difference in, in the world and in, in their business? Well, aside from creating the relationships one on one that you create with people, because it always, always begins there. Um, it's, it, it's also taking advantage of the technology and utilizing it in a way that, you know, is going to be productive. And so, you know, we can always, we can do videos, we can, you know, we can create content of that's written. We can write books. We can speak at different, at different places. If you're a, you know, if you're in a, um, a, a local community, there's all sorts of civic groups, clubs, organizations, all these types of groups who would love to have you speak. And you don't speak just on your business, but you speak on something that really brings value overall to the community. And and 
on your topic, of course, that I don't mean that not to do that, but I mean, you do so in a way that, that everything you're doing provides so much value to them that they just want to hear more and more of you and they want to ask you the questions. And so I, I think it's like that. I don't think there's any magic formula. I think it's just, you go out there and you, you know, you do it through those various ways and means. Yeah. I like that. And just, you know, just to repeat what you said before, I really like that you said, you know, being authentic doesn't mean like, you know, if you're a jackass to be more of an authentic jackass all the time. Exactly. Right. And <laughs> yeah. For some people we'd say, don't be so authentic. Right. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, well, thanks, Bob. Thanks for all the great work you're doing and sharing your time with us today. My pleasure. Great to reconnect. Yeah. And you're up. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Bob. I, um, and Ben, I appreciate being able to, uh, to ask a question here. Um, as someone who, like I, just how I made is kind of is is this mentality even when I was you know a stay at home mom you know when we would drive it was hey how can I help out if it costs me five minutes and it saves somebody a half an hour I'm all in and I I love when you say that you know not keeping track is important too and um, you know it takes too much time but what I'm wondering here is can you give us an example of of some a way that is when things go wrong or or what are some of the pitfalls to look for as somebody who is just naturally looking for other people's um out for other people's interests and what makes sense to them i'm probably more likely to be a doormat um what are some things to to watch out for if you have any ideas yeah so and that's a, a very important question because one of the things that that we say is that if you find yourself being taken advantage of by others as part of a pattern. So I'm not talking about every so often because life is life. And, you know, unless we never leave the home, uh, we're going to be taken advantage of that, you know, one time or another. Now I'm talking about if you find yourself in a pattern of this, mm -hmm. um, then it's, it's, it's not because you're a nice person. It's not because you're a giving person. It's because you're doing things in a certain way that creates the environment for people to take advantage of you. Mm hmm so it you know if that's you and, and i'm not saying it is but it, if that is you to that level the first thing i would say is congratulations for noticing it for being aware of it because you cannot you cannot improve a situation that you don't realize exists and many people will go through life unconsciously having you know being taken advantage of or having these things uh, doing things that really don't make them happy but they don't realize they're, that there's something going on. They just think that's what life is. They don't take time to. So uh, in other words, until you make the unconscious conscious, mm -hmm. there's really no no recourse. So the first thing is you've made it conscious. And then you ask, so, so why is it? Why is that that it seems to be that like I'm that person who mm – -hmm gets taken advantage of as a doormat tends to be now there's there's different reasons for it and i'm not saying any of these are are you okay but I, but there are different reasons for it there are some people who they just don't feel good about themselves uh, this might go back to something in childhood it might go whatever it happens to be they don't feel they're worthy of not being taken advantage of okay for some people it's the payoff of um you know wow I, you know that's Oh, that's so and so, such a nice person, but always just being taken advantage of that poor thing. And there's a payoff there sometimes. That's the attention of it. It might be not having the tools to know how to say no in a way that you can both ho hold to your values of respecting others while still also being able to respect your own boundaries. Okay. So there's there's many, many reasons for this. And I, I, I don't know you well enough to, to know why, but I think it's something worth introspection or getting with a mentor, or you see a professional counselor who can help you work through it because all these things, remember it's, it's internal, it's, it's unconscious. And the, the thing we need to do is go into that unconscious and be able to pull it out. Once we're aware of it, we're still only halfway there, but we're halfway there. Mm -hmm. Then you can take the steps to re retrain yourself. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. Adrian is next. Bob, how hard is your stop? Because we're coming up on time. Uh, I got another. You want to let's go to 1235 Eastern time. And then All I gotta... right. I'll ask the quickest one ever and then we'll let Adrian close. So okay. you've got an event coming up and there's plenty of ways to support you. How can we 
continue to support Bob Burke? Um, well, I don't really want anybody to support me if they if they come to the event. I want them to come because they feel it's going to be of um, of value to them. So I'll put the uh, thank you for asking, by the way, about the event. Um, if anybody would like to come, I'm going to put the uh, I'm going to. Oh, shoot, I'm going to put this here in the everyone thing so you can see it. Go to this event and look. But yeah, don't don't come to support me. Come because you think you're going to get a ton of value from it, uh, which you are, by the way. I think this is really the best event I've ever put on. We're so proud of this. Um, so check it out if you'd like. And you can always ask if you have any uh, questions about it. So thanks for asking, Ben. And real quick, I might replay this for the podcast listeners at home. How could a podcast listener not here today in the group um, be of service again, or serve themselves by following your way. Uh, yeah. Best, best way to do that is just go to Berg, B U R G dot com. And I have a daily newsletter, a daily uh, email I sent out called daily impact. Mm. And we send that out Monday through Friday. So if you go to Berg, B U R G dot com, you can subscribe to it there. Adrian Hart, you get the final question. Oh, Hi, thank you. Hi, Bob. I'm honored. So, Bob, oh. you have a ton of books right behind you. In addition to your own books, if you had to distill it down to one or two to give to someone that's just a baby, maybe like graduating high school, um, to give them a framework for following their dreams, getting their mindset right, all of those important things. Um, like, imagine the place is on fire. You got to grab two books. This is it. What are the books? Yeah. Uh, it, that, that's an interesting question. Um, the first one would be, it's called the secret of selling anything. And it was, uh, by Harry Brown, B R O W N E. It was written. It was published posthumously. He had died the year before it was actually two manuscripts. He had written back in the sixties. When he was a, a sales manager for a company, he wrote this for his the training for his team. Harry was actually a best a multi best selling author on economics, philosophy, politics. But this book was never even meant to be published. But his wife found the manuscripts afterwards, and she gave it to another person who gave it to another person who, and they finally got it um, published under this title, "The Secret of Selling Anything." Uh, in the book, what he says is the secret of selling anything is find out what the other person wants and helps that help them get it. That's the big secret. But this really isn't so much about sales, although I think it's very important, the selling aspect, because when you, you know, uh, you were saying about the person who's just graduating high school or college, you said, uh, whatever it happens to be, they need to know how to sell. It's a very important skill. But here's what the book's really about, okay? Because the selling part is just the the uh, ancillary. Uh, it's about understanding human nature. It's about understanding why people do the things they do. And this, to me, is the most important thing that you can equip a young person with because we're always dealing with other humans. We need to understand why generally humans take certain actions and why they don't. If we don't know this, we're gonna stumble through life. If we know this, and of course, everyone's an individual, everyone's different. They all have their own uh, desires, their own ways of seeking happiness, their own way. But there are certain, you know, human nature, is a human nature. It's the general psychological characteristics, feelings, behavioral traits of humankind that apply to all humans. So when we know this, when we understand this, then we can see patterns in people's behavior. So this to me is a, um, uh, I did a, 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 re, a, um, a review on my blog. If you go to Berg, B U R G dot com slash blog, and then in the uh, in the the search, just put the secret of selling uh, or Harry Brown, B R O W N E. I think I have a couple of articles I wrote on him, but there's a a, a um, review of this. Then I'd say the other book would be Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People, uh, because that's people skills. And again, we're dealing with people, right? We can understand them. That's human nature. We can understand this. Now, how do we deal with them? 
in a very effective way? How do we deal with them in such a way that what I call genuine influence, the ability to deal with people in such a way that not only does everyone come out ahead, okay, but that but that you help them to feel genuinely good about themselves, about the situation, and about you. So when you can master those two understandings, human nature and people skills, I think you're really nine steps ahead of a game in a 10-step game. Thank you, Bob. That was absolutely golden. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you. Why don't we all unmute and give Bob a round of applause? Uh, thank you so much. <laughs>